Powerbound from Guitar Lessons 365.com have one of probably my favorite Hendrix songs. We're going to learn how to play uh, Spanish Castle Magic by the great Jimi Hendrix. Uh, so this one is a lot of fun to play. Got just a killer riff to it and a great solo. So I'm going to show you the whole thing today. Before I do that, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Ring the notification bell uh, so you'll know when I release a new video. And uh, check out my Guitar Academy. Link is in the description. The Academy covers, uh, it's got all my guitar courses. Um, just one subscription, you access all the courses uh, from a total beginner course to courses on more advanced technique, uh, improvisation, ear training theory, guitar tone. It's all there, so please go check it out, would you? All right, so let's start here. I am tuned down a half step, as Hendrix did a lot. Um, so I'll have those notes in the description if you're unfamiliar with that. But it's just uh, E flat, A flat, D flat, G flat, B flat, E flat. So every string down a half step. Um, and then we're going to have this quick little intro here that looks like this. So that right there is just going to be the 11th fret on the A and the D string together. And then you play the 9th fret on the D and the G twice. Just like this. So basically, that's the riff. You repeat it three times. And then one more time, but on that last one, you only hit that nine, the, the nines there once. And then it gets to the main riff of the song. So we have this. That main riff is also the chorus riff there, so you're kind of learning two and one here. So this riff, um, you know, kind of as Hendrix does a lot, he's always kind of throwing little inflections in there, little tiny fills. So instead of covering all those, all those like note for note kind of thing, we're gonna just kind of take the main riff how he would play it most of the time, um, without all the little fills that you might see later on in the track, especially. So um, let's start here with this. <laughs> So that is going to be the second fret on the D string to the second fret on the A, and then to the low E string. Enjoy like this. Now you will see this. I've seen uh, it like this. So you play the E and then just straight to the octave. Uh, but really, if you listen close on the album, he's actually going going across the fifth of the chord. So we got the And then we played the uh, fourth fret there on the A. Then go back and play the second fret on the A. And then back to the uh, fourth fret on the A twice. Try this. So when after you play that, it's kind of staccato, those two fours at the end, except you put the last one right. Now, we basically want to hit just a B in the high E open strings on top. And you can also add the fourth fret there on the G string as well to kind of make it sound a little bit bigger. So we have the fourth fret on the uh, G string and then the open B and the open high E. So we have this. So we have this. Kind of repeated that four times, and then we have uh, the first verse, which looks like this. It's not very far away. All right, so that's going to start with just some power chords. So second fret on the uh, A string and the fourth fret on the D. So it's just a B power chord, then move that back one fret to the B flat power chord. And then over to the fifth fret power chord on the uh, low E string, the A power chord. Then the A flat power chord, a fret back. So we have this. 
And then we're going to end the end of the verse riff before we repeat. It's just this. Um, we're going to have this very uh, reminiscent, Hendrick, known as the Hendrix chord, uh, but down off of a C sharp. So it's a C sharp dominant seven sharp nine chord. So we're going to have fourth fret on the A, third fret on the um, uh, D string, fourth fret on the G. And then fifth fret on the B. Now, when you first hear him play it, like in the first verse, first time of hitting it, he kind of doesn't really got that note in the B string on there. It's kind of like this. It's kind of just those lower strings. And then later on in the song, he'll start playing more of the chord. But live, he just was just playing the whole thing. So we have this. And just repeat that. All right, then we have the pre-chorus, uh, uh, which is similar to the, um, uh, well, at the beginning of it, it's similar to the main riff. Let's do this. All right, so we have basically the same riff that we did here off of E, but we're doing it off of an A power chord now. So we're going to just play the second fret on the G string, then second fret on the D, and the open A string. And then to the fifth, I'm oh, sorry, the fourth fret there on the D, and then to four, four. So it's the same thing, just to kind of move down a string. And here, he actually has the open strings in there as well. That's why this. Uh, it sounds really cool too, uh, and I hear some cover versions of the song do this. You might want to do this. We have this. So that's just basically instead of the open B and high E, we're just playing the fifth fret across the B and the high E. So that's also when you're doing that A chord. And then back. So basically that A version of the chord twice, you don't have to do the bar, you just can do it like he does in the album, which is just the other string. And then do the E version of it twice. And then we have this little part. Now, mysteriously, that little part right there is really low in the mix. Um, but he does it the same way for both the first and second pre-chorus. So we have, you can do this with just kind of one finger bending. I usually, these kind of double stops when I'm bending, I like to use two fingers to do it. But regardless of how you want to do it, you're playing the sixth fret on the G and the a B together. You gotta bend them together. Then down to the fours, four on the G and the B. Then six four on the D strings so with this. And then move that up to the eleventh fret. I'm sorry, the ninth fret there. We're at the ninth fret, the index finger will be at the ninth fret, but these fingers, the first double stops are the eleventh. And then instead of going six, like there's six four down here, you just go down to that 11, so we have this. And then we get to the chorus, which is just that main rift done twice. Mm. 
the choruses later on in the song are a little bit longer, so it's just that same riff repeated a little bit. Um, so then we get back to verse number two. Now, verse number two is very similar to verse number one, except there's a little fill at the very end. So we still have the... That little fill is all the thing that he adds at the very end, and that's just that two on the A string, then four, three, two, zero on the low E string. And then back to the same pre-chorus and chorus we did before. Now the second time through these chords, sometimes especially when he's doing around that, the, the pre-chorus. He might not play the open strings, he might just do a little fill based out of F sharp minor pentatonic. Obviously, he did that a lot live. He just kind of messes around with it and stuff. So just wanted you to know that as we go through, you can kind of stick with this st kind of standard way of playing it, or you can just kind of mess around that F-sharp minor pentatonic there um, uh, if you'd like. And then when it gets to the, the E chord, just kind of hang out with that. Uh, just, just do the open strings again. Uh, all right, so then we go through the same uh, pre-chorus and uh, chorus, and then we get to the solo. Solo is really cool, so I'm going to play through the solo for you real quick, and then we're going to check it out phrase by phrase. So here we go. <laughs> So um, that's got some uh, massive bends in it. <laughs> and I think there's a couple of overdubs too. It, se it seems like there's little sections in there where it, it, there's like one thing kind of bleeds over into the other. So, um, but anyway, we can just play straight through it. So we're going to start here. <laughs> So that's the f first phrase. So we're going to start with the sliding from 4 to 6 on the G string. Then we're going to take that and go pick 6, slide to 9, and slide back down to 6. And then now slide uh, six, uh, 4 to 6. And then pick 4. So it is. From there we have this. So that's play place four on the D string, then play six, five, four on the D. End it with seven, four on the A. So that whole phrase slow. From there we have this. So uh, that's we're gonna do a bend there at the sixth fret on the D string, and then play six normal, then play, then play four on the D. Seven on the A, then back to that four on the D, over to four on the G. For this. And 
and then we have this last little run. So that's going to be 4-7 on the A, then 4-6 on the D, then 4 on the G, and then bend 6, and then play 6-4. So uh, all together though. I uh, hear it sounds like it's kind of holding on to that note and then we had this next section starts. All right, so that's, so out of this. So slide into that ninth fret there on the B over to the ninth fret on the high E string. We're in C-sharp minor pentatonic here, by the way. And then you're going to do a bend at the 12th fret there on the B string. And pick it again. Release the bend, pull off to 9. So it's... And then a couple more bends at the 12th fret. And then we're going to have a... So that was a bend, and then not bend. So you got to be... So it really kind of be like, bend it, kill it, and then release the bend and pick it when it's not bent. So just kind of do that. I just mute it by just placing my pick against the string again. So we have this. All right, so th that bend there at the 11th fret there. So I have this. Play a 9 on the B. When you get to that bend on the 11, that's kind of the beginning of the next phrase. So it says, looks like this. So just coming, it's easier to see it in what we're doing when you go from the phrase before. So that we'll Let's play this. So that right there, when I did that bend at 11, then I rolled from 9 on the, uh, the B string, 9th fret, over to 9 on the high E, and then I played, so I played 12, and then half step bend, and then whole step bend. So... Now from there we have this. So we're just kind of just messing around with C sharp minor pentatonic. So we have this. He plays the bend when he gets that bend of the full step bend of the twelfth fret. You play that bend and then pick nine, hammer twelve, move back off to nine. And just kind of repeat that lick twice. And end it there with that bend there. I'll kind of sustain the bend a little bit at the 12th fret. And then we're going to go. So that's going to be from the 9th fret on the high E string. Then pull off 12 to 9. Over to the 11th fret there on the G string. So... Now here, here when we get to that ninth fret bend, you're gonna do the bend, and then roll the nines again from B to high E, and then, then you do that ninth fret, eleventh fret bend again. So we have this uh, ninth fret, uh, sorry, eleventh fret bend and release. 
full off to nine. Over to 11 on the D. Back to the ninth fret on the G. And back to that lick again, that 11th fret there on bend on the G string. And then that roll, so this. Coming out of that. Uh, and then we jump up here. So this next phrase looks like this. So that is going to be start kind of a trill between 14 and 17 on the B string. And then a huge two whole step in. And then we have this little. So that right there, we have 14 on the high E string to 14 on the B over to 17 on the B string. And then here, it sounds kind of more authentic to me if we play this 14 and then do a whole step in and release it. You can't just go play 16, pull off to 14, and then play 17, 14 on the B. So, so you can't do it like this. Or Now, continuing from that first kind of series, that first bend, then we have this. So what he does there is... We play... Sliding into the 15th fret there on the um, G string, and then over to the uh, 14th fret there on the B. And then we do that uh, two step, two whole step bend again. And then a uh, one whole step bend. And then, then 17, 14. So, so we gotta, gotta make it sound like up two frets, up, up, up uh, four frets, then up two. And then a series of uh, two whole step bends again. And then we're going to end the solo with the uh, a bend of the 16th fret on the high E string. So you're going to bend it by itself first. And then when you pick it again, you can hear it get the B string in there. So it's kind of holding the B string. Up. And then we're back to the uh, uh, pre-chorus there. Uh, so now after the solo, we have uh, this new kind of thing that happens at the very end of the pre-chorus, uh, which sounds like this. Alright, so that right there is kind of, uh, I, I did, I, I did kind of just a, a little fill in there. It's kind of similar to the stuff that he'll do throughout the song, but not necessarily what he does after the solo. We do go to that A riff first. And that is a part where he just kind of, he, he does, he starts the riff. And then he'll do like a little just kind of random fills in F sharp minor pentatonic. And then back to the E riff. After you do that E riff twice, then we have this. So this is the uh, pre-chorus right after the solo. So we have this, this big bend. I'm going to play this one like he does it on the album because it's, it kind of sticks out pretty well. So we have this bend at the fourth fret on the D string. 
then play full without the bend, and then play two on the D string, full on the A. And then end it with three, two, one, zero on the low E. And then we're back to the chorus. And here's when the chorus kind of goes on a little bit longer. He kind of played through it for a while. And then they just start kind of jamming on it. And he has a little outro solo, which don't typically cover these types of like outro solos note for note because they are they do type they kind of wander and they fade out or whatever. But um, it's kind of easy to emulate what he's doing. All you gotta do is you're just playing uh, the C sharp minor pentatonic. So that's familiar root shape minor pentatonic at the ninth fret. And then up here at the 14th position where he went to that other pentatonic shape. So once again, he does a lot of bends there as well. And that, just that pentatonic shape, if you want to know the whole thing, 16, 14 on the high E, 17, 14 on the B, 16, 13 on the D, so on G, I'm sorry. And then 16, 14 across the D, A, and the low E. kind of mess around there for the outro solo and do your own thing but you can do the other one note for note and then do your the outro solo you just kind of uh do your own version of hendrix i guess all right so i hope you guys enjoyed it it is a really fun song to play as soon as you get it down it's got a really great groove to it um so hopefully you'll be doing that in um no time at all all right see you guys again soon Bye bye